And you know, I have Step with Marcus J. Live from the Den Legacy Internet Radio. Thank y'all. Uh, continuing listening to us here tonight. As I had mentioned to you guys, we are going to run the gamut of our conversations about and words with attitudes also known as nwa and we obviously had the movie that debuted over the weekend uh they made over 56 million dollars at the box office and that's the highest rated or highest grossing i should say rated r movie in the month of august they, they, they came out and said that so that's uh, I guess uh, an accomplishment, uh, if you will. So that that was pretty cool. I was one of those people that contributed to that fifty-six million dollars, and our first guest uh, of the night was part of that. And from my understanding, this particular person participated a little bit more than the norm. Of course, you hear her typically <laughs> on the second Monday of every single month. You heard her in studio with us last week. Her and her teenager, and she's back with us tonight on the live line because she saw this movie and she couldn't wait to tell you her feelings. I got my sister, Miss Tony's on the live line. What's up, girl? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, you doing good? Sounding all excited and stuff. What's going on, man? Uh, yeah, man, I'm just chilling, wrapping up a nice little vacation. Yeah. So yeah. just, uh, you know, kind of quiet day. No, I can dig it, man. I'm glad that you had your vacation and whatnot. I'm glad you got an opportunity to get your rest, R-E-S-K. And uh, now yes. uh, <laughs> you got your rest. You know, we had, this, <laughs> we had this movie that came out over the weekend, and the <laughs> name of it is Straight Outta Compton. Straight Outta Compton, of course, the origin story of the NWA group. And so, you know, I guess we can jump right into it. I kind of teased it at the beginning. You told me you saw this movie how many times? I saw it twice on Friday. You saw the movie two times in one day on opening day, twice on Friday. So that's a little bit much. Uh, you know, I, I, I saw it also on Friday on opening day. Um, and I, I guess I'll kind of share what my initial thoughts are on the movie after you. So since you saw it twice, you must have twice as many of initial thoughts <laughs> 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 on, the, on the movie. So what's your thoughts, man? Straight out of Compton, just initially. We're going to get into some specifics, but just your initial statement on the movie. What's your thoughts? Oh, great movie. Um, they did an excellent job. Um, I must say I was thoroughly pleased um, because I didn't initially want to see the movie. So they did an excellent job. And again, I saw it twice, so it must have been pretty decent. Why didn't you want to see it? What was that about? Um, I don't know why I didn't. I don't know. I just, and that's really, I guess I should be ashamed. Um, I don't know. I just figured it was going to be like some poor acting, you know, some bad Jerry Curl wigs. And, um, you know, I didn't know how accurate of a depiction it was going to be. So... Um, yeah, I really didn't have much interest in seeing it. It was my son, a.k.a. the teenager, who really wanted to see it, and that's why we went to see it. Really? So you went off of the strength of your son, and just for the record, he's, yep. he's 16. He'll be 17 later on this year, right? Uh, right, he'll be 17 in October. Right, he'll be 17 this year. So he wanted to see yep. it, and you couldn't care less. Now, you and I are generally around about the same age. I'm, I'm just a, a hair older than you, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, right. you know, but I, I know exactly how old you would have been in 1988 when Straight Outta Compton first came out. And so when they did mm -hmm. come out, were you a fan of NWA? Did you care one way or the other back then? Um, I liked it. I just, I thought that they were brave. You know, I grew up in um, basically the suburb, suburbs. So, you know, I was familiar with hip hop and rap, but I just thought, wow, those guys are like brave. They're like really, really pushing it. So. Did you have a favorite song? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. Cause I was only, oh, I'll go ahead and say it. I was only 12. Okay. So, okay. you know, it's not like I could buy the, the music or anything like that, but I do have a, an older brother who, I guess at the time, would have been 18. Right. right. So, you know, I, he would rock out to, and he listened up to all kinds of music. But, um, yeah, I just I just really was in awe that, wow, like somebody actually let them, like, record and sell this music to people. Right. Well, you know what's crazy about that? You were 12 in 1988. Mama Jay is 12 now. And, you know, the thought of her having access to anything you know close to the things that they were putting out even me at 14 at the time you know I, I don't know how mom's jay and pop's jay uh well actually i do know how i, I didn't let them know i was listening to it. <laughs> let's, right let's, right let's, exactly. let's be honest with that but 
when you look at the group and when you look at their contributions to uh, pop culture, to music, and, you know, I'm using air quotes when I say contributions. I mean, what do you think their indelible legacy, of course, using the word legacy, legacy in that radio, what is NWA's legacy, in your opinion? Well, I think I did a few things. First off, you know, contrary, I guess, to public, to public opinion, you know, I think it actually provided a link between the East Coast and the West Coast. Um, you know, I think we experienced that for a few years, you know, that East Coast versus West Coast beef, you know. Um, but I think that it really kind of opened our eyes to what they experienced, you know. Um, as far as hip-hop goes, you know, if you know anything about hip-hop, you know that hip-hop is about storytelling. So, you know, hip-hop was kind of born out of New York, and, you know, New Yorkers are, you know, kind of more charming, snazzy with their delivery. But I think... Um, you know, the West Coast um, kind of take on it really opened our eyes to a different way of life. You know, there's violence everywhere, but kind of that, you know, that gang violence that we weren't really, really aware of or used to um, here kind of opened our eyes to that. Um, just gave us a more raw experience and a more raw way of telling a story. Could you relate to them in, so. any, in any way? I mean, and you don't have to think about only in 1988 when they first came out as a 12-year-old. I mean, but just, you know, before your adulthood, just as a young person watching them, because I don't really want to get right, you know, to the movie just yet. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to delve at young Tony as a young person when N.W.A. was 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 hitting, when they were hot. Could you relate to them, or was it just something that was on the radio or on the CD player? Oh, I could absolutely relate to them. You know, I was a, a young brown girl, and while I grew up in the suburbs, you know, I was born in Jersey City, New Jersey. And, yeah, so, you know, I, I I know people, I knew people who looked like them, who lived like them. And, I, and then, yes, I did experience some of the same things, even though I was only 12. Um, but I, I can relate to exactly what they were talking about, you know, for the most part, some of the things, which I guess we'll get into a little later, yeah. you know, maybe not so much, but yeah, I could definitely right. relate. Right, right. Now you mentioned going back, let's go back to the teenager for a second. I mean, he's, mm -hmm. he's 16 and I just kind of made a little bit of a joke about how when you were 12, I was 14 when they first hit and. You know, I know through our teens, if, you know, you know, if our folks knew that we were listening to a group that had the kind of lyrics that they had, it may have been a problem. How do you feel about the teenager if he popped in um, after police or if he popped in, you know, uh, well, uh, some of the lyrics, are, some of the titles of their songs are pretty aggressive, which is part of what I'm going to ask you next. But anyway, you, you get the point I'm making. If he if he if you walked into his room and he was jamming it straight out of Compton. Would you feel some kind of way? Would you keep moving like you didn't even notice that? Well, he does listen to that kind of music, actually. Um, and, you know, I, I feel like for me, as a parent, you know, I kind of give myself a, a hand clap of job well done. You know, I'm not one of those parents who is so naive to think that, you know, we live in this perfect wor world. And while I try to make sure that he's not in that type of environment where, you know, he's afraid of, you know, gang life or, you know, having to sell drugs and things like that, you know, that's a part of a lot of people's lives, especially a lot of brown people's lives. So, you know, he listens to all kinds of music. And, again, he'll be 17 in a couple of months. So, you know, I wouldn't dare, you know, try to say, oh, well, you're not listening to that music because I know that he would right. um, anyway. So, you know, I, I want him to, to know and to be to, and to, to you know, be well-rounded. And uh, like I said, he listens to all kinds of music. You know, he does prefer some of the, you know, some of the, the, the hip hop artists and groups that aren't mainstream over, you know, what we hear on the radio every day. And like I said, he's the one who actually wanted to see this film. Um, and it has really kind of opened his eyes to kind of want to go back even further and find out not more just about, you know, NWA, but also about the early origins of hip, of hip hop. It brings me to, I guess, the uncomfortable question that I'm going to ask you. And to be quite frank, I think, I mean, I shared this with you before, so I'm not breaking news to you, but I'm breaking news to some of our listeners. I, a big part of the reason why I wanted you on the show with us tonight, uh, not just because we love you, but because you're a woman. And not mm -hmm. only not only you're right. a woman, but you're a woman and you're a mom. And that was something that I felt was very important to the next line of question that I'm going to ask you now. MWA has had uh, a 
reputation of having some very questionable lyrics with regards to their relationships with women. Uh, and I'll give you an example. There are certain songs that they have whose titles include Just Don't Bite It, She Swallowed It, One Less Bitch, and Automobile. Automobile is about having some sex in a car. Uh, I, I, I said those titles graphically and I didn't scream myself from saying them because of the point or the, I guess, next set of questions I'm going to ask you now. As a woman, uh, you know, a woman of a young man, how do you rationalize coming up as someone who dug them as a crew, as a young person versus knowing the real deal now versus your son being a fan of the group? I mean, I, I don't know if I'm asking that right. Uh, you know, I'm trying to be respectful in how I ask it while keeping it real at the same time. I and mean, what's your thoughts on where we're going with that? Well, you know, I have never been, and I'm still not to this day, one of those women who says that, you know, oh, that's degrading as women. That makes us look bad. The only person that can make me look bad is me as a woman. So it's my responsibility to make sure that I am, you know, or at least I try at all times to be a woman with class, the kind of woman that I want my son to know is what a woman is supposed to be. So, again, hip-hop is about storytelling, but it's also entertainment. So you have to be able to distinguish that, you know, they're telling a story, and especially with NWA, you know, it, that, with that gangster rap. They can't really rap about, you know, you know riding a six foe and, you know, out there in the streets and, and all of that violence and then talk about this, this sweet young girl who went to a private, you know what I'm saying? It, it right. just wouldn't have fit. So you have to be able to still distinguish that this is an entertainment um, but you, we as parents, we as just women in society still have to make sure that our young boys and young girls know, you know, what a woman is and, 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 and is not. So, right. you know, again, it was all, it, it fit with their music and I never took it personally. I don't take it personally because that's not who I am. Right. So you're one of those people, you know, when they do the song called One Last Bitch, you know, he ain't talking about me, so I ain't tripping, basically. No, yeah, and, and, and the biggest thing is if you don't like it, don't listen to it. Right, right. Now, you'll have some people who will say that this kind of hip-hop, and I guess now is the time to really get into this piece of it, this kind of hip-hop was the beginning of the end with regards to the positivity as well as uh, having such a strongly negative effect on our young males in the community. What do you say to someone who listens to, N well, not listens, but who has a problem with not just NWA, but groups like them, Snoop and Eminem and 50 Cent and, you know, groups like Tupac and, 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 and folks like that. What do you say to people who say that their brand of hip hop is basically brain crack? and killing our communities? Again, we cannot rely on entertainment to raise our children. You know, you again, it's great to, to have them, you know, listen to it. They like to dance, rock out, what have you. But you still have to let them know and show them, you know, what a real man, what a real woman looks like. So, you know, and again, there's, there's a lot of positive stuff out there, too. So, to sit there and bash hip hop in general because of, you know, the lyrics or certain groups um, and, you know, what they put out as music, you know, that's, that's, that's just ignorance. You know, you, you, there's, there's a lot of positive people out there who aren't mainstream for that reason, because it's not as entertaining to some people, you know, to hear about coming together, you know, as a, as a people, as a community, as a society um, that, you know, we, it's, it's our job as parents, as adults, to make sure that, you know, we're still raising our children and not leaving that in the hands of other people. Right, right, right. Let's get to the movie. Um, you uh, you saw it twice, and I'm going to keep saying that because I, uh -huh. I just think it's funny that you saw <laughs> yeah. the movie twice. That you're a crazy person when it comes to that. Um, but you did, in fact, see the movie two times. Um, you said that you enjoyed it. Tell me why you enjoyed it. I mean, what was it about this movie that made you say, you know what, I'm digging this. This is a great movie. What was it, what was it about that that made you feel that way? The movie was extremely well cast. Um, and, you know, I'm watching this movie, and with the exception of Ice Cube's son, O'Shea Jackson Jr., you know, the other people, for the most part, I was like, who is that guy? I don't know who that, who is this guy? Um, but it was really well cast. And even if, you know, I just knew some of the songs, it was a great depiction of the lives 
of the members of NWA, not just about, you know, their music, but about them as people. And, um, you know, after the movie, you know, I went and I had to, like, look up who was this guy. Like, the guy that um, uh, Corey Hawkins, who played Dr. Dre in the film, just phenomenal, phenomenal. I, I, and, uh, what's his name? Jason Mitchell. Um, again, you know, I'm watching this little dude, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, who is this guy? Um, great actors. And, you know, you have to look at the uh, kind of comparison, but not really a comparison because they all did well. Like I said, you had um, Ice Cube's son who played him. Uh, Corey Hawkins is like a Juilliard-trained actor. And then you have Jason Mitchell who played Eazy in the film who has done, he's had a couple small roles, but, you know, no real formal training was working at like an oyster restaurant in New Orleans. Like, um, you know, it, it was just amazing to see these, these young men um, just really bring the film to life in, the, in a way that was relatable um, and really made you understand that, you know, these were not just some, some young thugs that, you know, were against the police. And, you know, they really had a message. And like I said, real hip-hop fans and hip-hop heads who know what hip-hop is all about to really relate and understand it. I know. I can dig it. Ain't no half-stepping with Marcus J. Live from the Den. Legacy Internet Radio. We're talking to our sister, Miss Tony, in reference to the NWA movie Straight Outta Compton. It debuted this past weekend at $56 million, the highest rated uh, uh, August uh, release, $56 million R-rated August release, and that set a record. Um, as far as the movie is concerned with me, um, I guess I'll, 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 I got one more question for you, which is not really about the movie, but I just want to ask you this one last question. But your interpretation of the casting to me uh, is spot on. 100, 100, 100 percent agree with you on that, because I was an NWA fan through and through. I mean, through and through to this day, I still am. And the reason why I asked you those questions about the misogyny and you as a woman and all of those kinds of things, because I have a very hard time rationalizing my love for NWA as a youth and having it still be a part of who I am as an adult, but who I am as an mm -hmm. adult. You know what I mean? I mean, the name of the mm -hmm. group is N words with an attitude. If you know me, you know, I don't use the word. Now, you'll hear a lot of the music you know, played here on Legacy and at radio, and that's a direct uh, correlation to the decision that I made as someone who, who runs Legacy and at radio. If anybody has, you know, questions about that, I'd be happy to discuss it, but I made the decision to not censor music on the station. Uh, but as far as individuals who have a choice in the moment when they're discussing issues, I made the choice that we're not going to use the word here. So I understand how that could be contradictory, and I'd be happy to debate or discuss that with anybody who would like to talk about it, because I certainly want to hear your opinions on that. Uh, with all that being said, I can't even say the real name of the group because I don't use the N-word. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I know yeah. songs like Just Don't Bite It and She Swallowed It and One Less Bitch are probably amongst the most graphically vile songs that have ever been written and, and put on, you know, wax and tracks, you know, and I would argue that those songs are as bad or worse than anything two live crew ever did. Um, mm -hmm. But I know all three of those songs inside and out lyric to lyric, word to word, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I did as a kid, I did when I was 12, 15 and, and 18. I mean, so that is what I struggle with. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I struggle with, you know, the 41 year old me who is raising a daughter who I would never want to hear these songs, which is a big part of the reason why I didn't take her to the movie with me when I went. Um, but I know all the words to them. I struggle with that. Mm -hmm. I struggle with that contradiction. You know, I struggle with the contradiction of being a huge fan of Dr. Dre, but we know that he put D Barnes down. You know, I struggle mm -hmm. with, you know, Ice Cube. You know, because of some of the things that he's done and ran and all the rest of them, you know, you know, with, with Yella being a director in, in the porn industry since their music career uh, wrapped, you know, I struggle with that as well. And so I, I, it's hard for me. Now, if we're speaking directly to the movie, I thought it was a phenomenal, phenomenal movie. It absolutely worked every single emotion inside of my body, like everyone. I laughed, mm -hmm. I cried, you know, yeah, I, I cried. Sorry, I did. I laughed, I cried, I felt every single emotion as I'm watching this movie. And I felt mm -hmm. anger, 
you know, I felt intense anger, you know, you know, particularly in the scenes that inspired the song After Police. You know, if you watch the movie and you, you know, have a hard time understanding why anybody would want to write a song called After Police, you know, in the context of what was going on with those characters at those times in their in their lives, you know, and you saw it, you know, you, you, you almost see a parallel with your Eric Garners and with your Michael Browns uh, and some of your others who have had fatal altercations with real life police just in the last year or two here in the United States. NWA made this song 28 years ago. You know, they made the follow up after police two, you know, 26 years ago. And so that is what I felt. I, I grew up as a boy who was the little guy of the crew, but had a big mouth. So I can relate directly to Easy E. I used to wear dark glasses and an L.A. Kings hat in Jersey City, New Jersey. I didn't even know what the hell an L.A. King was. I didn't know that was a hockey team, but because Easy E rocked the hat, you know, I rocked the hat. You know, MC Ren was always, and to this day, my favorite of the crew. He was always my favorite, but you know, he was the one who wrote "Just Don't Bite It" and 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 she swallowed it. So again, there is the contradictory. And then the last thing I'll say before I have you jump back in, Tony, Corey Hawkins to me. Uh, while MC Ren and Aldis Hodge, who played him, were the ones that I kind of watched for because Ren was always my favorite, the one that really struck me more than anybody in the movie was, 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 was Corey Hawkins because he was Dr. Dre more so than even O'Shea Jackson Jr. was Ice Cube. O'Shea Jackson Jr. Mm -hmm. had the mean faces and the mean mugs and the body language and all of that kind of stuff. But you know what... Uh, you know what Corey Hawkins had? He had the voice. It was a bunch of times where I literally had to double take because he sounded just like Dre to me. He sounded just mm -hmm. like he had his cadence in his speech. He had his swag and everything. So uh, I just thought it was a great movie. I thought it was good with the way it portrayed, you know, their individual feelings about what was going on at the time. Now, one thing that I did see that I want your opinion on before I comment was an increased police presence at the theater that I had gone to see the movie at. And I went in a very, uh, shall we say, mixed area. You know what I mean? The movie theater that I went to is very mixed as far as the people that you'll see. You'll probably see more white than black, but that's what you'll see in that particular theater. And I knowingly knew that there would be a police presence because I saw it in the media. But when I saw them, I felt some kind of way about that, Tony. In the theater that you went both times, did you, first of all, go to the exact same theater twice, or did you go to two different theaters? So I went to two different theaters. Okay. Did you see police and presence at both the, of them? The, the first time I went, I, we went to, like, the 450 showing. So it was, you know, late afternoon. Um, and no, no, it was, there was no additional um, police, nothing that was usually not there, um, which, you know normal um the second time we went we ended up having to go to the 10 o'clock show and there may have been an extra car or two out there um and i will say the second time i went i went with my significant other and he was really upset about that um you know i hadn't heard anything about it because i you know i was all with the radio but you know did you like next year they're gonna have an increased police presence and i'm like why are you surprised you know, anytime there's going to be a lot of brown folks in the same place, they are going to be there as well. Um, and unfortunately, that's just the way it is. It didn't bother me at all um, because I know I'm not going to act a fool. Um, and what actually, when we came out of the movie, they were gone. Like there were there were there was no one out there. Um, so it, it didn't surprise me, but it didn't bother me at all. Well, it bugged me. It bugged the hell out of me because. Yeah. You know, we've been talking about this a lot in social media and we had gotten, you know, a lot of participation from folks on social media about this. Uh, mm -hmm. And I had a problem with it because the reality is, you know, we shouldn't put certain crimes on certain people based upon demographics. But if we're going to keep it 100, I ain't seen no stories, no black folks shooting up movie theaters and the movies that I have seen them shoot up. One was Batman. Uh, and the other one was Trainwreck. Those are the ones that are coming to my mind right now. Batman, of course, being James Holmes, who instead of being given life in prison, excuse me, instead of being given the death penalty, was given life in prison. Help me understand that when he killed 12 people and wounded 70, but he's not going to get, you know, he's not going to have that government sanctioned murder that some folks believe he should have gotten. I'm not one that's for or against the death penalty. I'm one who understands that it's there. 
and I can analyze who I in my personal feelings feel like I think they deserve it. I don't want to be the one to pull that switch, but I can have in my own opinion who I think deserves it. And if there's ever been anybody, it's been James Holmes, and he didn't get it. He shot up a movie theater. And this guy who shot up the movie theater in Tennessee at a movie called Trainwreck, which, I mean, it's random. It's completely random. And so to see that you would have Straight Outta Compton, a movie that is marketed to and for black folk. And I debate, I debated this with someone, very intelligent brother, I debated this with and we just have a difference of opinion with regards to this. Mm-hmm. This movie was marketed to, you know, black people between 18 and 50 because, you know, the 50 mm-hmm. year olds are the people who enjoyed NWA and the 18 year olds are their children. So that's who this movie was marketed to. And because it's black folk, they feel like they might have some issues. And so they sent extra police that outraged me and insulted me absolutely insulted me to assume that we can't go to the movies to see a movie that's marketed to us and we can't go in there and behave ourselves and when i walked out of the theater and i saw a police officer standing there i was so disgusted the sight of him just absolutely disgusted me and i just kind of paused for a second and just kind of looked at him and then went about my way because it just insulted i was insulted to even see him there you know to hear that the 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 maker of the producers of the movie felt so strongly about this movie and there's some folks that are saying that it should garner Oscar consideration and all that kind of stuff. But these are the same people who are going to the theaters and saying, We'll pay for extra security if you think you need it. I mean that to me is absolutely insulting. To that well, I'll right. tell you what I did find insulting. Um so at the first theater that I went to um with my best friend and her nephew um, when we went to go to, into the theater, um, the girl who took our ticket, ticket said, it's now our policy to check bags before you go into the theater. So I said, okay, that's, I mean, I guess, are you guys checking for food or, you know, are these safety precautions because of the recent, you know, shootings in the theaters? Um, but then when I went back later that evening, I actually went to a different theater owned by the same company. Nobody asked to check my bag. Nobody said anything about anything about checking my bag, um, and I just wondered, like, wow, why did what? I don't really understand that, right, but right. Well, we, I mean, we just found that odd. Which I mean, like I said, for me, I said, okay, maybe if it's an extra safety precaution, you know, that they're checking people's bag maybe for weapons, and that's fine. Um, but it wasn't done again. At, at the other theater, who is on it's it's on that exact same company. Right. No, I can dig it. I mean, and that to me is that's your question there's your problem right there because it's an example of how you know there's different rules for different people and that Mm -hmm. to me is you know that to me is a problem you know if we are going to live in a post-racial america as they say they want to be you know when i say they i mean the powers that be you know that they the invisible the invisible boogeyman man who destroys everyone's lives you know they <laughs> that, 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 yeah, yeah that, i know they that, that, that <laughs> they you know if, if they say we are to live in a post-racial world then when they have a movie called train wreck you know they need to start checking bags for that because that's actually the last theater that i can think of that got shot up train wreck how about that you know and so it it is what it is and i understand what you say when you say you know you know i understand this is you know kind of something that you have to do so you go with it uh but i also know you well enough to know that when there's a situation that needs to have some words spoke on it that you would absolutely say some words um and i wish that i had been a fly on the wall of that second person that didn't check you for ids because i'm sure you had some comments right there in the moment on the spot whether you said them to to that person or not i'm sure you had a comment did you not Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, because, like, I mean, like I said, and, you know, I had a small bag, and, you know, my best friend has this huge tote, and, I mean, she literally looked inside, and, you know, the second one, oh, go on and enjoy the movie. So, yeah, yeah but yeah. such is life, such you know, unfortunately life. for us. No, no, I got you. Unfortunately, you know, is the world that we live in, but I think that it's very important for folks like you and me and others when we see situations where it's not fair, then we speak up and we mm-hmm. say something about it because ultimately, you know, that consciousness, once it's awakened in the right person, it's when, you know, real change begins to happen because we are all leaders and we have our own positions in this war that we're in. Uh, and as long as everyone understands that we actually are at war and stop sleeping, I think that we can potentially move forward. And it's more, it's so much more than going to 
they're going to a movie theater and dealing with a movie. So I can dig it and I can dig you on your position on that. Ain't no how stepping with Marcus J live from the den of Legacy Internet Radio. You've been listening to Miss Tony and yours truly talk about the NWA movie uh, straight out of Compton that came out this weekend movie featuring Ice Cube, Easy E, MC Ren, DJ Yell, and Dr. Dre. Tony, I appreciate you joining us here tonight, as you do from time to time, typically on the second Monday of every single month. You want to say your goodbyes. It's time for your abbreviated rant and closing, as we normally do at the end of the show. But we got a whole lot more show that we're doing tonight after we finish this interview. But anything you want to say before I let you go? Uh, no, I just thank you for allowing me to speak on the movie again. I think it was an extra, uh, an excellent film, and I hope that everyone goes out to support it. And um, it's pretty cool being on the show twice. I'm like, Mark, what? No, I can dig it. Yeah, <laughs> we're making up for July. I think July we missed your week because we had a replay that week, and so I, I think uh, I think you're sufficiently caught up now. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Hold the line. I want to wrap to you for a minute. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Live from the Den Legacy Internet Radio. We're gonna take a break. And when we come back, we're going to continue our discussion here tonight uh, about N.W.A. and the Straight Outta Compton movie. Uh, tonight's show, of course, is dedicated to that topic and that discussion. Uh, later on in the show, we're going to actually have a member of the NYPD during those days on the air with us to share his opinions. And you guys know him. It's our brother Dave in L.A. Marcus J. Miss Tony. Ain't no how stabbing Marcus J. Live from the Den Legacy, Inter- Inter- Legacy Internet Radio. We'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> 